Hey, how's it going, everyone? I wanted to do something a little differently because I realized that it takes me on average about 13 hours. Yes, 13 hours to produce and upload a video because it takes a lot of time to research, revise the scripts, and here I am just complaining as if you're my therapist. But anyways, when I break that down, the ROI is about 60 cents an hour, right? So it takes me about two days to, to make a video. So I thought I would do something a little differently where I can be a little bit more raw, quick and dirty, where I can just press screen record on my phone and upload it to increase the frequency of uploads. So I think we're gonna go ahead and call it, I don't know, the Dividend Digest. And I have uh, rotating categories that we're gonna be kind of going through. But in today's video, we're going to be discussing a stock, a company that is hovering around its 52 week low. And that company is going to be Cisco. So if we scroll down right here, as we can see, the year range, the 52 week range is $45 a share all the way up to $58. And right now, Cisco is currently trading for about $46.50 a share. If you wanna see it again, oh, there it is, the year range on the bottom right. And let's go ahead and look at their chart to see why I see some value and prospects and future in Cisco. Uh, uh, of course, we don't want to be looking at Apple. Let's go ahead and search Cisco. There it is. Cisco trades on the NASDAQ. And for time period, let's go ahead and say the past 365 days. So in one year, right, their total return, so far, they are down by negative 7%. That is... I don't know about you, so let's just figure out, are they undervalued or is Cisco a value trap? Let's go ahead and go back to the uh, company profile right here. And if you're not tracking, uh, Cisco is one of those outdated tech companies that seems to have a grip on corporate America. So for the two Fortune 20 companies that I worked for, Cisco was the infrastructure security system in place for all of our computers, networks, you name it, it was Cisco. And do I love their product? No. However, I just feel like it's one of those uh, services that a lot of companies signed contracts with and it's just really hard to navigate and move on to another service provider. Uh, let me go ahead and read their official company profile, right? So Cisco Systems is the largest provider of networking equipment in the world and one of the largest software companies in the world. Its largest businesses are selling networking hardware and software, uh, cybersecurity software like firewalls. What's really funny is that during my MBA journey, I almost accepted the offer to join Cisco. So this is a company that I know a lot about. And even though I'm very aware of their business model and their company and their like profile, when I think about their future, I don't think they're gonna go anywhere, but I also don't see them growing as fast and as hard as NVIDIA, Google, Meta, Tesla, whatever. Uh, when I think about Cisco, I think about it as like a very safe, slow, and steady grower. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and run some intrinsic valuation calculations to figure out if Cisco is undervalued right now or if they're disgusting and ugly, right? So the first one is gonna be the multiples valuation. Essentially, we're looking at peers in the same industry as Cisco to figure out a market-derived price. And when you look at all of these different companies that essentially do the same things that Cisco does, the median P.E. ratio is 42.9. So with that number taken into consideration, that spits out a stock price of $127 for Cisco, the intrinsic value using the multiples valuation. Moving right along, if we look at the DCF, which is the discounted cash flow analysis model, the free cash flow is going to tell us an intrinsic value for Cisco. Now, when we look at the free cash flow, I think this is where I see redemption and why I would feel uh, safe as a potential investor, right? Because if you look at 2018, their free cash flow was 12.8 billion dollars. No, friend, this is not thousands or millions. This is 12.8 billion dollars. 
And as you fast forward, um, it looks like they stagnated at around that $14 billion mark. And then in 2022, the free cash flow actually dropped down by negative 13%, and it went down to $12.8 billion. However, as of last year, they rebounded 48%, and now they posted $19 billion of free cash flow. So the average growth rate for their free cash flow for the past handful of years is 10%. However, if you know anything about me, I like to play it safe. I want to be conservative, right? So I'm going to plug in a bearish number of 3.4%, which is what the analysts are predicting based on their um, forecasts and, I guess, based on their calculations from the earnings calls and what they are observing in the industry. So taking that 3.4% into consideration with some balance sheet numbers, by the way, their cash and cash equivalents, they have $26 billion dollars insanity. Their total debt is $8 billion. So when we think about the cash to debt ratio, this company is safe for the time being. Like they're not going to go anywhere. They're not going to go bankrupt anytime soon. The bigger question is, are they going to grow at a rate faster than 3.4%? Anyways, this spits out a DCF intrinsic value price for Cisco, $91.97. Okay, so moving right along, let's go ahead and look at the discounted, sorry, the dividend discount model. Basically, the dividend payout and the growth thereof is going to give us an intrinsic value for Cisco. Now, when we look at their dividend payment, it is literally the depiction of slow and steady, right? That's why I keep using that phrase to describe this company. Because in 2020, the dividend payout was $1.40. The next year, it was $1.44. The following year, it was $1.48. And then as of today, it's $1.60. They're not raising their dividends by double digits year after year, which I personally think they have the cash on hand to do so. But I think because their original business model is slowing down, what I'm assuming is that they're saving that cash on hand, just like Apple, to make strategic acquisitions and to do share buybacks, right? Very recently, Cisco actually acquired a very big software company known as Splunk. So I think what's gonna happen is they're gonna continue to make these smart acquisitions in order to grow their revenue inorganically. Some people think that's a bad thing, I don't. Sometimes businesses need to adapt to the modern customers and the revolving and changing um, landscape of their industry. If you think a company can just grow their revenue organically for 100 to 150 years, you're delusional. Sometimes they do need to make a pivot in the right direction in order to be relevant. That's just my opinion. But anyways, uh, the average dividend growth rate is 3.4%. However, we're going to plug in 3.2%. So under the assumption that Cisco is going to be growing their dividend by 3.2% year over year, well, that gives us a DDM price for Cisco, $34.40, which is about $12 shy of what it is currently trading for. And the last intrinsic valuation model we're going to be looking at is the Graham's valuation. Essentially, the growth rate projection and the corporate bonds will give us a price for Cisco. And that's going to be $26.52, which brings us to the conclusion, the intrinsic value for Cisco, right? Because we're trying to figure out this company is hovering around its 52-week low of 48 what was it, like $45.80. They're currently trading for around $46.00. So is this company undervalued or is it a value trap? Are they disgusting? Are they ugly? Are they your ex-girlfriend? Okay, so the intrinsic value is going to be, let me see, $70.09. Not too bad. Not too shabby. The analysts on Wall Street, well, their price target for Cisco is going to be $55.97. So based on our calculations and based on Wall Street analyst calculations, Cisco is undervalued. So with that in mind, I'm going to try to figure out what my acceptable buy price would be because 
I know a lot about this company and their future prospects, and I'm not saying that this is going to be double-digit gains year over year. Rather, I think this is a company that is going to be a slow and steady grower for a time to come. Um, going back to Morningstar, if we look at their uh, dividend profile, let's see what we're looking at right here. Um, dividends per share, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so... For the current dividend yield, it's sitting at 3.38%, right? So for simplicity's sakes, let's just go ahead and say 3.4%. That dividend yield is about in line with the rate of inflation, historically on average. So that's how I'm thinking of Cisco. Their dividend is going to keep up with inflation. And because it's a tech company and we don't know what their big next move is going to be, and since they're in the tech industry and category and sector, they do have the potential to do a turnaround story like Microsoft, right? For like, what, 20 years or so, Microsoft was literally trading at a low valuation. And then all of a sudden, in the past like five or six years, they made a pivot to cloud and other subscription service models. And now their company, like Microsoft, is one of the tech darlings. Right? But if you look at Microsoft in 2007, 2009, or 2014, they were kind of remind me of Cisco. However, the difference is Microsoft had a pivot and they were able to capitalize on the cloud industry. But when it comes to Cisco, we need to see what are they going to do. Okay, I'm talking too much. But let's see what the Morningstar uh, analysts believe the price target should be. So they think that the fair valuation for Cisco is $50 a share. And if you look at their uh, five-star price, meaning like this is when it's absolutely on sale and discount, if you can snag Cisco at $35, a let me zoom in so you see what I'm talking about. At $35 a share or less, a steal, a bargain, you're getting it on clearance. If you're paying $67 a share, they're saying, hey, that's, that, that's when it's overvalued and you're kind of ripping yourself off or you're expecting the company to grow a lot. So based on all these different variables, me, Wall Street, and Morningstar, Cisco is underrated, okay? So now let's go ahead and try to figure out an acceptable buy price. So the current trading price, I'm just going to go ahead and say it's $47. Give or take, sometimes it might be like $46.50, $46.25. I'm just going to say $47. With a 10% margin of safety baked in, then the acceptable buy price is $63 a share. So if you were to buy Cisco, or I should say, if I were to buy Cisco right now, then I would get a discount of $16 a share, right? But let's go ahead and let's, let's try something a little differently. What if we were to plug in what the Wall Street analysts believe the price target should be? And um, I don't know. Let's go ahead and just like, let's write down 55. Just for fun. At $55, right? A 10% margin of safety baked in. Then the acceptable buy price is $49.50 a share. Again, Cisco is on sale. So to wrap up this quick and dirty Dividend Digest 52-week low video and today's first uh, spotlight, Cisco, what are my thoughts? What are my opinions? Here's what I think I'm going to be doing. I'm going to dollar cost average into Cisco as it hovers around the mid 40s. So as it continues to trade for around 45 to 46 to $47 a share, I'm slowly going to acquire the shares because 5, 10, 15 years from now, I don't see them going anywhere. As a matter of fact, they, Cisco just seems like a safe company, right? When you think about dividend investing, Cisco should be up there, like one of the honorable mentions. Everyone always talks about like Realty Income Corporation, Costco, McDonald's, Main Street Capital, but based on what I see, a dividend yield that keeps up with the rate of inflation and it's a tech company and they're undervalued. And um, I don't know, what's their P.E. ratio right now? It's got to be uh, in the teens. Yeah, right. Their P.E. ratio is a 15.7 for a tech company. 
with what? What is it like over 25, 28 billion dollars of cash on hand? Okay, so thinking about all those variables in the calculations, I think Cisco's undervalued and I'm personally going to be buying. However, please do your own research and due diligence to figure out if you think Cisco is cute. Because I don't think that Cisco is a delicious dividend compounder with cheese. I think Cisco is decent. And because it's decent and on sale and has a lot of cash on hand and their free cash flow looks great, I'm, I'm going in. I'm going in. With all that said, uh, let me look at one more thing. But one thing that I do want to call out is when we look at Cisco's stock price history, um, it's it's not a pretty picture, right? It's negative 16.8% for the past five years, their total return. So this is a company that does not have the best track record in their stock performance, despite having a good balance sheet and having good cash and good free cash flow. And if we zoom out to like 10 years, please tell me it's a better story. Yes, when you zoom out 10 years, then the total rate of return is 101%. That I can live with. So with that said, this is the first episode of Dividend Digest. Let me know what you think. That means the frequency of uploads should increase because it takes a lot less time to prepare and upload these videos. Anyways, I love you. Have a good day and I'll talk to you next time.